So here is the time you guys have been waiting for the ride on the Honda Silverwing. So this is a great bike and the best thing is also you get great deals in the used market. So I get the kickstand on so if you get on the bike if you leave the kickstand on it will not start so if you push the kickstand up hold the left hand brake and then start it it fires right up without any issue it has the ABS light on but as soon as you start moving it disappears so when you look at the bike it is very narrow here see how my legs kind of go inside here but you actually put your foot here they did this in a way it's a very distinct style because shorter riders can fit this bike and flat foot it and I, I didn't think that because oftentimes like they'll have like a large board it'll be kind of flat so if I had to do this it would be a little bit more of a struggle to flat foot but this you can be a little bit shorter and flat footed so this is your handbrake oh, there we go handbrake and the bike is very smooth and it takes off extremely well like it's it's not a overly overly fast bike it is just extremely smooth. Honda made this bike smooth because it appeals to riders that want something that's easy to ride every single day. You don't get this bike to save money on gas because a large maxi scooter is just simply not that good on gas. A smaller 250 might get you 70, 80 miles to the gallon. A 200 or 150 might get you 90. This one, in its best, probably will get you 50, but I think it's closer to 45, 42, 45 miles to the gallon. But like I said, the people that get the Silverwing are not the people that are saving money on gas. These are people that want refinement. So I've been riding the Silverwing for a while, and there's a couple of things that bother me as per usual I think the biggest one is really the miles per gallon but that's not really a fault of the bike I should have known that it doesn't get great mileage and you know the people that get this bike aren't really concerned about mileage this is just simply probably one of the more sophisticated balanced bikes I was looking at the Bergman 650 as opposed to this because the Bergen, Bergman 650 represents a little bit more luxury when it comes to maxi scooters. The cool thing about the Silverwing is that for some reason it was made in such a way that you can ride it every single day and it looks much more streamlined. The Bergman feels almost like a car. It's extremely big and wide. This one doesn't feel like that. And it doesn't feel like that, especially from the driver's seat, because it kind of tapers off the way they styled it. You know, one of the interesting things about Honda engineering is that it almost feels like sorcery. When you take the Goldwing, uh, for example, that bike hides its weight so well that it feels like a 600cc motorcycle with the engine really low to the ground. For a, a manufacturer like Honda that makes very conservative cars, their motorcycles are very ahead of its time. Even a bike that a lot of people don't like, which is the NC700 and NC750X, that bike is an amazing feat of engineering. Perhaps not the type of engineering that wins races, but they do their best to make a bike that's a commuter with that one, and it's probably one of the best commuters. I keep thinking, like, I want to shift it but this bike is just not a shifter you know on the highway this bike is probably better than what you'd expect you know it's not a uber fast bike and i found that going 60 miles per hour is 
exactly the sweet spot of this bike 60 65 but it seems that most 600s have that you don't want to be going too fast on the highway on a 600 at least it doesn't feel like it's uh, a natural rpm for the engine but right now 70 miles an hour it's perfect at 45 miles per hour on the highway this thing is at 4,000 rpms at 60 60 miles per hour it's at 4.9 thousand rpms so it revs kind of high and that's the reason this thing uses quite a bit of more fuel than a comparable motorcycle look at this this jeep is using the jeep to like do stuff i thought you only drove these things to starbucks in these type of roads it's excellent they're not too fast they're not too slow and the bike goes around corners surprisingly well because the weight is just so down low and it's extremely smooth as well with its long wheelbase it makes the bike much more stable and it's got plenty of power you you're not going to get any wheel spin or wheelies on this honda made sure that this thing doesn't do any wheelies or burnouts it's also got the link braking that honda is famous for and that's an acquired taste but it does make the bike very safe when you apply the left lever it applies the rear and the front at the same time and of course the one on the right is just a front brake the brakes are adequate because the bike itself is not extremely fast but it is a bike that is completely able to do highway on a hot day this bike is extremely hot because there's so much wind protection to this thing and the windscreen this one is an aftermarket one so it's even better for wind protection the owner was a full-time commuter so this is what happens when you get a full-time commuter you get a windscreen that's a, a hack because in the winter you want to be able to get all that cold away from you it puts a lot of weight on your bum so for me after a while it actually tires me out quite a bit so 140 miles it feels like I've done more miles but from zero to like 80 miles it's like sheer comfort it is like I'm riding a recliner another con is that the this bike is not really a great commuter for major cities it is and it isn't like the reason I think it's not a great commuter especially in the DC metro area is that there's too much traffic this is a hot bike <clears throat> and it's also extremely wide so lane splitting is an issue on the west coast California yeah you can split lanes because it seems like the lanes are wider east coast very difficult to get around another con is that this bike is heavy you don't really feel the weight as much but it is heavy when you move it in the garage you will feel that weight and it's pretty typical of a Honda as soon as you start moving that weight disappears almost entirely One of the really amazing things about this bike this is 2003 this is considered an historic motorcycle it makes you a more relaxed rider you know one of my problems with riding a motorcycle is that I tend to be a little bit on the aggressive side hence the reckless speeding tickets I've gotten and I really enjoy the power but I also enjoy touring and exploring and this thing just kind of lets you explore something without having the need to go fast when you run roll up to a stop sign you hit that left brake the bike doesn't dive because you're applying both brakes at the same time but if you use the front look at that it dives in quite a bit it takes a while to get used to the cornering of this bike but it it handles extremely well for what it is this is pretty much full throttle for a squirrel hey see good brakes it's very comfortable for the rider and the passenger I rode with a passenger and she thought that this bike was extremely comfortable and it is because it both the rider 
and the passenger have lumbar support. On a bike like this, you can go out of state, you can go 200 miles, 300 miles a day. When you have a scooter like a 150, like an SH-150, you're not going to do that. But this one lets you. It might not be the fastest scooter around, but it carries the speed the same as a car. So you can go on the highway, you can take big roads, big side roads without having the fear for going too slow. Or whenever a hill comes up, you're not going to lose any speed. On a smaller bike, yeah, that's possible. Like a 150, you go up a big mountain pass, you're slowing down. On this, yeah, no chances of that. It's torquey, it's very powerful for what it is. It can carry two passengers very comfortably. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the Honda Silverwing review. It's a great motorcycle and a lot of people might not want a maxi scooter, but if you're interested in getting a touring bike, I would seriously consider a 400cc to 600cc maxi scooter like this. They can make your ride much more comfortable. They are very easy to use. They're very maintenance free with their drive belts, with the CVTs. And quite frankly, I like the stealthiness of a scooter. Scooters are great for city riding, but this one is specifically good because it adds a different element, specifically touring to the fray. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.